As you mentioned, I'm Cadet Garrett Crispin, a senior at the United States Military Academy. Um, today we're answering the question, are we able to classify burned areas during active wildfires? And this is an investigation into utilizing Sentinel-1 SAR and Sentinel-2 imagery, as along with deep learning, to assess this burned areas. My West Point advisors, as well as partnership with Lockheed Martin Space, and my advisors over there, which is a huge thanks to them through this mentorship and learning process. All right, so the current capabilities. Right now, Sentinel-2 is predominantly used, or really only used, uh, to measure the burned area and burn severity. And this is done months after the fact, around eight months after a fire has been completely extinguished. And the way it does is it passes over, it collects multiple different series of images um, that are free of smoke, clouds, day-night variations, and this is why it takes many months for, to kind of cure the imagery to get a complete picture. However, in this investigation, we're looking at Sentinel-1 imagery, which is equipped with the C-band synthetic aperture radar, SAR, um, which is unaffected by any daylight variations, maybe clouds, or any smoke that's occurring within the wildfire. Um, and because it is unaffected, that each pass we get over a certain area that a wildfire is occurring, and they're put on, they're, there's an increasing the number of these SAR satellites um, as CubeSats kind of come out um, in the atmosphere. Um, we're able to gain, gain this information in a more real-time sense, closer to maybe even during while an active wildfire is occurring. So our kind of data workflow looks um, taking the satellite data, which I just mentioned, um, and then using Google, Google Earth Engine, which is a cloud repository of pretty much all the satellite information that you could ever want and more. Um, so we're able to freely pull that information down, apply the algorithms that we'll talk about today um, to kind of get our result uh, in our product. So the data processing next is where I spend kind of most of my time working with that, the satellite imagery. Originally, as applied statistics and data science major, I found myself working in a lot of GIS um, kind of space um, and kind of pulling information from that, uh, but then piped into a convolutional neural network with the UNET uh, architecture, which gets us our burned area classification of interest. So pre-processing the Sentinel-2, which is kind of the industry standard that we have, um, it's done through the U.S. Forest Service and kind of used to uh, calculate this burn severity and burn area, but however I mentioned, it's done well after the fact with clean imagery. It's just the normal, the change in normalized difference, um, which you can see here. For this study, we use seven different wildfires. These are all in Colorado, and they cover a wide range of the different uh, geographies. So from the kind of more deserts and prairie out east to the Rocky Mountains uh, in, the, in the Rockies. So... And then Sentinel-1 looked a little bit different, where we take the VH band, of, which is the vertical horizontal band of the SAR imagery, uh, and calculated the change in burn ratio. Uh, we then enhance these ratios to kind of widen the difference that they have, um, and then normalize both Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 to, to kind of compare those different values that they have. So you can see um, on your left the ratio image, and then you have the ground truth, uh, which is calculated by just thresholding the Sentinel-2 image, uh, which we'll talk more about the pros and cons of that a little bit later. So the way we broke um, this up would be into cases. So we slowly, not slowly, but built the kit, the base cases um, along to progress towards these pre-processing te pre techniques, measuring the differences in the model outputs and seeing how they performed uh, in that sense. So in the first sense, this is the base case. So it's the benchmark that we use to compare all the other cases and whether if a change that we added to the pre-processing methods um, had enough difference to be worthy to kind of keep continuing it. So first, splitting the images into 256 by 256, um, just at, to input to this convolutional network, because these fire images can become thousands and thousands of pixels in our sense wide, which kind of overflows the model. Um, and this first one is just trained on one fire, which results in about 1,200 1, tiles. And we'll talk about maybe the downsides of that <coughs> 1,600 tiles, sorry, and then just tested and evaluated in these six metrics. And so you, we have up here is the plateau fire. You can see the original SAR imagery on the left with the ground truth and kind of the clutter on the outside that comes with it, the model output, and then the discrepancy map um, there where green is correctly burned, uh, red is unburned, and then blue was predicted burn, but actually not. So we can see here it under predicts, generally under predicts. Um, it has the kind of general format of the fire, but overall under predicts, especially on the tail, tail ends of this, plateau, this unique kind of plateau fire. Next, oh, um, we kind of combine these for this sense, is the data augmentation. So trained now on two fires, the Pine Gulch and Lake Christ, we sculpted the center patch. Now why we took, took the center patch is well, we were underestimating before, and that's because when we take this large area of a fire, we have a lot of unburned area 
uh, especially when you're taking a square area. We have a lot of these unburned areas where there's not even a fire anywhere close to it, but the model is getting a lot of reps and seeing um, these tiles. So we cropped a lot of those out um, and then also applied some documentation to increase the number of tiles because doing to this center extraction, we limited the no total number of tiles, but through this, we were able to increase that. Um, we can kind of see in the model output here that it overestimates now. Uh, it's still following the general shape, um, but it will overestimate on the model. So we can see maybe we have a little bit of too estimate, too many burned areas and is over predicting um, on a burned area given, given the original file. So last one for now, um, we then looked at different ways to deal with the problems of foreshadowing and uh, the salt and pepper effect that is commonly found in SAR imagery. So foreshadowing is where you have this satellite that's shooting these radar waves out and in the Rocky Mountains you have giant mountains obviously. Um, on that back side of the mountain is where the shadowing occurs. So the radar may be over here, the radar wave bounces back but it's unable to get to that back area um, so it, it'll register it as unburned. So in this sense, um, but around, however all the area around it is considered as burned as well. So applying these filtering techniques hopes to like kind of blend those gaps uh, in the, and with foreshadowing as well as salt and pepper. And we did three different filtering kind of techniques with median being the generally uh, the best performing ones of the three. Um, with the model output here, we can see it much closer follows the follows the ground truth. And I think it's really interesting that in the ground truth, due to the thresholding, uh, which I'll touch on at the end, um, that patch towards the bottom left there was actually burnt. So the SAR was able to keep it up or catch it and classify it as burned. Um, and then follow that general pattern uh, with some discrepancies. And we're seeing that now the specifics, so there's actually a river running through this and it was unable to catch it to that specific. So we see the model is kind of creating the right area but not getting the specifics that we need. Most likely do this filtering or we're kind of blurring that image um, so it's not getting the granular details of the actual fire within that space. But it is generally performing uh, pretty well on that perimeter of the burned area as well. So. Further findings, I mentioned the ground truth images um, being a problem. So across the standard there, or industry and researchers, um, there isn't, I guess, a way to you is they use Sentinel-2 imagery uh, and then they classify this metric at 0.5 or 0.45 um, and how much burned area is above or below this threshold when the normalized difference. In our sense, that we found a big discrepancy on, on the model output based on what we set this threshold at 0 0.4, 0 0.45, or 0 0.5, which kind of can change those results. I think in all the papers that I've kind of looked at and especially felt it in this project, that there creating a sense of that is like a whole under whole another problem situation task in itself is creating a, a way to other than thresholding that we see uh, to kind of evaluate the ground truth especially working when working with satellite imagery the other way you could do that is to hand do it every fire classifying bird as unbur burned or unburned um, which is basically an impossible task with with these large fires next would be the thresholding image output um, when we classify we have a threshold set for if we're going to classify it as burned or unburned, in our sense, we kind of went to almost the extreme, um, as if there is a <clears throat> if there is a even 10% chance that the model thinks that it's burned, we're going to classify it as burned. This creates an over kind of estimation, especially we'll, and the reason we did that is to capture maybe the more shape and burned area of the fire, but um, in this sense, that point one uh, could be due to the fact that we're not getting seeing those granular details um, because of that overestimation and more kind of extreme sense. And then the future work, uh, we started stopped at case four, but case five, we're currently working on a more complicated way of creating another case and working on the foreshadowing as well as salt and pepper effect, which is maybe some machine learning or some more complicated algorithm rather than filter, filtering Gaussian or uniform uh, to apply, apply a more strict and more robust way of dealing with these effects. So pending any questions, that's, that's me. Excellent.